Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are making wands and if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm actually going to be giving away several of these and several others. So let's dive in. First thing I want to do is make a master. And this master will be what I can then mold and create all the rest of them off of. For that I have a one inch dowel and I believe this is poplar. So I want to cut it to be a little bit longer than I want it to be because in the spring pole lathe you have to have something to connect the ends and wrap the rope around. Speaking of which, let's go over to the spring pole lathe. Now if you want to see this, I have several videos on making it and I have a whole series on using it, doing bowls and other fun things like that. But it really shines when it comes to doing spindle work like this. Now I know it's a round dowel, but rarely is a dowel actually perfectly round. So I have to actually round out the round dowel. And once I get a nice clean surface on there, then I can start doing detail. I want to create a large bead on either end of the handle and then have finger grooves in between. And most of this I'm going to be doing with the roughing gouge. I find it to be a good all-around tool that you can do a lot of things with. And if you're first getting started, it is a tool that's easy to learn and easy to work with. You can practice your edges, you can practice scraping with it, you can use it to, uh, to gouge out. And it's a, it's a fun tool. Once you get used to it, you can do a lot of turning with that. I have a few carbide bits that I also do, especially at, like using the detail tool. It allows me to get in really close between the, the beads and the edge on both of these and get nice and clean. Now, I'm not a professional at this, so I'm not going to be getting a, a tool clean surface. So I ended up sanding on the, uh, on the lathe. Makes it a little bit easier, gets it cleaner. I'll go through a few grits and get it to where I want. Now, for the tip of this wand, I actually want to make it square. And so I'm going to start by squaring off the base here. And in, I want to kind of turn it into a long pyramid. So a four-sided pyramid all the way down to the tip. Now that I have the base squared off, I can use that as a reference to then plane down the rest of it to thickness. Just clamping it in the vise at an angle allows me to plane it down. Use a scrub plane to get rid of most of it, then come into the smoothing plane and clean it out. Once I get two sides done, then I can use a bit of leather in here because it is uh, wedge shaped. The leather will help it space it out. And I can get it pretty close to taking it down to the tip. I want the tip to be square on the end, but I want it to be eh, about an eighth inch by an eighth inch. So I tried playing with it sticking up in the bin in the vise, but it didn't work very well. So just holding it out of the bench allowed me to bring it down to a really nice fine point that I'm looking for. Now we have our master. Let's do some cleanup before we start molding it. Scraping plane and sanding, getting everything down the way. I just need a little bit off the end so that I have this ball on the this very end of the wand. Going through bow sanders. I have several videos on making bow sanders. They're great for sanding out rounded edges or handles and things like that. Now my first mold, I ended up using this piece of PVC. It's a lighter, uh, a thinner PVC that's very flexible and you can cut it with your knife. It's not PEX, but it's something bigger. I think I used inch and a quarter for this first one. I'm using OOMOO. It's a smooth-on product designed for molding. Um, in the end, this was a little bit too soft for the small item that I was doing, but I, I like to use this a lot of times for the molding. It's a very, very simple one to work with. It sets up with the right amount of time. You have about uh, 30 minutes or so to play with it, six hours until it's hard, and it's a very forgiving uh, mold. I just want to make sure I get all the bubbles out of it because I don't want anything as it's such a small mold. I don't want any bubbles right up against the, uh, the wand. So sticking in the vacuum chamber allows it to shrink all those bubbles out and I've got a really nice clean material that we can work with and pour into the, um, into the mold. I want to make sure when pouring it, the mold, you can't see it right here, but I have it at an angle leaning towards me so that it runs down the side as opposed to creating new bubbles on the top. And it's going to overflow. Then we can stick in the wand, and I made a little bit more than I needed to, which isn't a problem because I have a cup underneath to catch all of this. I just want to make sure when I get to each of these ridges that I stop and work it into those ridges so that I get a really nice clean connection all the way down. I don't want any bubbles in those ridges, otherwise I'm going to get a mold with a bubble. Then work it all down and stick it down in and have a little bit of fun as this all comes out. I want to have something to push it down in so it sinks down into the mold a little ways, but uh, I still have the top of it open. So I put a nail on a block and then put that block into the vise to hold it down so that the wand won't float out. Because the wood is lighter, it will float. Then we can take it out, peel off all the excess, and then cut this open. Because the I chose this PVC because it was softer so I can slice it down either side. 
and then peel it apart. That allows me to have a mold, or I was planning on having a mold so I can put it back in there. But the PVC was actually under a little bit of tension, and so when I cut it, each side shrunk. Um, so the radius it was holding was actually smaller. So when I tried to put them back on, it didn't quite work out well, and I ended up having to cut them in strips and kind of use them as splints to hold it in place. So the next thing we can do is very carefully cut down this and pull the wand out. And, you know, I cut a little bit too deep on the other side, and so it ended up being a two-piece mold, which caused me some problems in the future. I'm going to be putting a core in all of these. It's, it gives the epoxy a little bit of stiffness and protects them, and I'm using uh, wall, uh, splinters from walnut. I'll show you a little later how I create those. So in this case, I wrapped it in saran wrap and then put splints on it to hold it straight. I'm going to be using Ecopoxy's liquid, uh, liquid plastic, I think it's called. It's a very nice poxy because it, it takes three days to cure and that allows all the bubbles to float out. It is very runny, so in a small mold like this, it'll work all the way down to the bottom. And I won't have any bubbles in the final project. Uh, I was very, very happy with how this worked. And then it came time to peel it out, and hey, I realized my problem. This was the, the mold was just so small and it was so delicate that it just shredded when I pulled the first wand out of it. Later, I used a different silicone. This is a lot harder, and I also put it in a larger pipe. I believe it was inch and a half. And this worked a lot better. I could put two slits down it and put it back in there, and it held together nicely. Then I can just run some matte tape up to seal those two cracks. And this holds it really nice and tight. I did a little piece on the end and then spiral wrapped it all the way up and I haven't had a leak yet out of, I think five of them that I've cast so far, I haven't had a single leak. And I'm really, really happy with how they come out. And now I have this perfect mold that allows me to pour them in. Here you can see how I make these splinters. I'll just put it in the vise, put some vise grips on it and twist it around until the wood cracks apart. And then that gives me all these little pieces that I can pull out and make a little bit thinner and fit down into the cores of the wands. Again, we're using the Ecopoxy liquid plastic, and I'm mixing in a little bit of these metallic dyes. They're uh, a powder that goes in that you can mix them, and when they come out, it looks almost like a metallic texture. You can buy a set of 12 of them for like $20. I'll leave a link to those down as well. And then we can peel it off and open it up and see what this thing looks like. And this is one of my favorites so far. It's a gold um, epoxy, a very light gold, so you can see through and see the, the walnut core inside. I'm really happy with how it came out. And with this new silicone, you just peel it back, it pops out, and then you can put the mold back in, and it works really well. Had a little tip of blue left from the last one, because the last one, the tip broke off. And so this one gets a new tip. And I kind of like how it came out. I might have to try that with another one, and just put a little dab of a different epoxy in there. Very happy with how these came out. Looking forward to the pink one coming out here soon, and then I'm probably going to do a green one. Lots of fun, and I hope you have fun winning one on the new channel. So there you have it. I am really happy with how these came out, especially the, uh, the seeing the core inside and the metallic coloring in it. They're just really, really happy. If you want to win these, I'm actually launching a new channel today. It is my gaming channel, something I've wanted to play with for a while, and it is devoted to Harry Potter Wizards Unite. It is the new game by Niantic, a company that I've followed for a long time and played all their games. So if you want to see how to win one of these, you have to go to my new channel, uh, Wizards News. I'll leave a link to that down below, and I'll tell you there exactly what you need to do to win one and the odds are pretty good because it's a brand new channel there aren't a whole lot of people on there and I'm gonna have six ones then there'll be a couple other prizes offered by other channels as well and so go on over there have a little bit of fun and uh, stay for the ones <laughs> so I hope you like this this is a lot of fun to experiment and play with new types and try new ideas I've got a few other things I want to try with this and I'm really enjoying this the nice thing is once you have a mold you can keep making these until the mold wears out which I've never run into so I hope you like this if you did please hit like, comment, and subscribe. And that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Now, where can I find a phoenix feather?